Welcome to EDL 850 School Law Module 1. My name is Matthew Poliak. I have been asked to tell you a little bit about myself, so I'll share some personal info. Uh, I am a uh, husband and father. I uh, love my wife dearly. It's been 28 years that we've been married now, and uh, close to 33 that I've known her. Uh, she's my best friend. And, uh, and a great support uh, and, uh, and help to me. I also mentioned my children. Uh, my daughter is 16, just got her driver's license. My son is uh, 13, just came back from his first uh, overnight camping trips without, without the rest of the family. So uh, he went with a local uh, church community group that we are uh, involved with and has had a great time. Uh, my involvement in my church is, a, is really important to me and my family as well. Uh, I currently serve as the elders quorum president in our congregation and, uh, and that, uh, that is my daughter is a, the ward chorister. Uh, my wife serves as a uh, stake family history director and, uh, and my son is the uh, president of the deacons quorum. So, I'm a physics teacher. Uh, I should probably just start telling people that I'm a science teacher rather than a physics teacher because the, the curriculum has changed a great deal since I first started. Uh, for the first 25 years, uh, for the, uh, I've been teaching now 25 years. For the first oh, 17 years or so, I taught upperclassmen, juniors and seniors, and I taught physics. Uh, about eight years ago, our school district decided that the uh, curriculum should be changed, altered, changed, flipped, and we will now be teaching uh, freshmen, not just uh, not just those that were college directed, but instead all incoming freshmen uh, are now taught physics as a mandatory requirement. Uh, this has completely changed the way we teach that subject, and it's now much more like a junior high physical science class with almost no math at all. So I've had to completely alter the way that's I, I teach that. Uh, I'm also a driver's ed instructor, which uh, during the summer eats up a great deal of my time because all of my work in that field is done during, uh, during the summer when I take the kids out on the road and teach them how to drive. Now, in addition to the important stuff, I do also try to make time for fun. There's not much time. I squeeze it in whenever I can. But uh, I learned to juggle and eat fire 30 years ago. Uh, I've always been an avid do-it-yourselfer. That's one of the things that, that I enjoy doing and helps keep me busy and saves our family money as well. Uh, and just in the last decade, I've become a kind of artist. I dabble in wire jewelry and styrofoam miniatures. Uh, I've made paper mache dragons with my kids. Uh, whatever suits my fancy. Uh, I'm an expert at nothing, but I like to try new things. Last summer, for example, I, I turned a bunch of brass nuts and bolts into a couple of small statues, a wasp and a butterfly. I'm kind of proud of the fact that I can learn to do that sort of thing. But enough about me. On to the content knowledge. We've probably all heard that old notion that the world would be better off if our schools got the funding they need and the Air Force had to hold bake sales to buy new bombers. At least part of the idea behind this is that we spend so much on military while spending so little on education. However, the reality is that the U.S. significantly spends more money on education than defense. In 2012, for example, the U.S. Defense Department budget was $525 billion, compared to the $1.15 trillion spent on education at all levels. Part of the misunderstanding that people have is that they are comparing apples to oranges. While the federal government pays for defense, the primary source of funding for education is not federal. It never was intended to be. 
most education funding comes from state and local sources. The, uh, there it is. The U.S. Secretary of Education oversees the management and distribution of the federal budget for education initiatives. Federal education funding goes to elementary and secondary school districts, post-secondary institutions, and college students. The Illinois Superintendent, along with the Illinois State Board of Education, sets educational policies and guidelines for public and private schools, preschool through grade 12, as well as for vocational education. It analyzes the aims, needs, and requirements of education and recommends legislation to the General Assembly and Governor. Our local high school superintendent oversees the daily operations and the long-range planning of our school district. Serving as the point person for all district matters, the role of superintendent is to supervise school principals and district staff, to work with school board members, and to manage fiscal operations. It's worth spending some time talking about the role of the federal government in education. Again, uh, the federal government was never intended to be the primary uh, driver of education in this country. That was initially set up to be a state issue and, uh, and still, for the most part, is. But the federal government sh d should it has a place. It should ensure that no student is denied the right to equal educational opportunity based on race or ethnicity or gender or disabilities or, or any of the other protected statuses. Uh, the federal government also has a responsibility to provide compensatory funding to facilitate access to educational opportunity for high-need students, including, but not limited to, students living in poverty, and students with disabilities. ESSA Title III, for example, is all about providing resources to assist English language learners, while Title V is all about providing flexibility and funding to rural students who would otherwise lack access to needed resources. Title VII is a direct replacement for property taxes that can't be levied against Indian reservations or federally owned lands such as military bases. These are appropriate uses uh, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and an appropriate role for the federal government to, to take. Uh, in addition, the federal government should support education research and development and the gathering and dissemination of information about the scope and quality of the nation's education system to inform policy and practice at the state and local levels. It would be good for the uh, local leaders in in Tennessee or Florida to know that their policies are more or less effective than those in Minnesota or or Utah, for example. Being able to compare that data will allow for states to maximize their uh, their success. Six point one is about the day-to-day -day operations of a school, so it's no surprise that the local school board and superintendent, as well as the associated administrative teams, uh, principals and vice principals, and so forth, would would take primary responsibility in this area. Everything from negotiating teacher contracts to arranging for bus routes and food services, and how much paper to buy for the copy machines all falls into the realm of local governance. All three levels of government would have a role in 6.2, though, once again, the bulk of this responsibility lands with the, within the scope of the local community. Now, obviously, state laws and regulations provide an overarching framework that superintendents and school boards have to work within. 
One small example here is that the Illinois State Board of Education requires all students to take the PSAT in grade 10 and the SAT in grade 11. But many of the details are left up to local school administrators. Which dates they will test, for example, or how students will be prepped for it, or how teacher assignments will be given during the testing. While the local administration offices will certainly develop policies and be the body that communicates most directly with community members, law is entirely outside of their purview. On the other hand, federal lawmakers make laws for a living. Those federal lawmakers and regulators will have a hand in the day-to-day -day operations of the school, but the bulk of the laws and regulations will be set at the state level. Now, I'm supposed to include this information, but I loathe the idea of reading my screen to you. So I'm not going to. At this point, if you'd like to see what I had to say here, feel free to read it. When you're done, start the video again, and you'll see the rest of it. Thank you for watching.